That's your boy Gooch. That is the boy Keys. This to my left, if you're a Chiefs fan, needs no introduction. Host of Chief Concerns, Eastern Kentucky University Hall of Famer, 11 year NFL veteran, member of two of the most prolific offenses in NFL history for the Kansas City Chiefs. That guy is Jason Dunn, your favorite tight ends, favorite tight end. Uh, what's going on, fellas? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Do well, you remember the first touchdown you ever scored, and what was that like? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I definitely remember my first uh, touchdown. Uh, it was uh, it was a wide stick nod, okay? So a wide stick nod against... Carolina Panthers, uh, and I had, uh, man, a Ty Detmer throw the ball to me. And he threw the ball up where only I could catch it. And so, Wastig nod is, it's a five yard out, and you nod, and then you curl back in, like over the top of the linebacker. So he kind of goes and he overruns the stick or, you know, runs out for the out route, and when he overcommits, you come back over top, and sometimes the safety plays that too. You know, it's just like, uh, and you set the play up because you run a lot of stick routes, a lot of out routes, and when I came back over the top, tied through that thing up in the air, man, I just, and it looked so pretty. I came out of the break, man, it was just right up there, and I just, I snagged it between two guys, and when I came down, the two guys ran into each other like the, <laughs> like the, uh, the Three Stooges or something, you know? And it was, it was crazy. And I got up, and I didn't even know what to do. I, you know, as far as celebration, I didn't even have a celebration ready. I didn't know what to do, man. I think I just held the ball up, did like a little robot or something. I don't know, like kind of did my arms. I don't even know, man. It was just – but it was unbelievable, like, when I got up and the cheers of the, the crowd, you know. And I was just so elated. And, you know, my teammates were just coming over, like, yeah, J.D., yeah. You know, just oh, jumping on me and stuff, man. It was it was so unreal that feeling. It was just like wow, like I just scored in an NFL football game, and everybody's just going crazy. And I didn't I had no idea what I what I was gonna do, you know. So it was uh, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. Uh, but that was the difference. Like when I was in Philly, I was probably about two sixty something. When I came to Kansas City, I was 272. I was my playing weight, 272. My playing weight in uh, Kansas City. But, yeah, that was a great feeling, man. That that first touchdown to get that first, whew, incredible. That, that face you see, you guys watching this, the face you see, that's still love for the game on yeah. his face. Yes, for so. those of you that don't know what that is, that's love of the game right there. Still, that's amazing. So I got another kind of my fun question. Like I have for the trolls out there <clears throat> that don't realize that NFL offenses are complex. Mm -hmm. How did you remember all of that? Like, I mean, you've got to be geniuses for the kind of yeah. things that you would have to remember because there's so many routes for so many different plays with, with variations of that play. And um, did you did you always were you always able to uh, uh, kind of change it on the fly if the route you were running or the maybe the blocking assignment you had the guy moved a little differently? Could you still could were you given the um, what am I trying to say? Like were you able to kind of, yeah 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 make the yeah. adjustment? Um, and, and, and how did you, how do you, how did you remember the playbook? Like, yeah. I just, I, and the only reason why I think about that is because I think of, um, Madden or, or, um, Gruden or Andy Reid and, and all those long, you know, everything like five minute play calls that you have to remember what your assignment is and everybody else's. Like, how did you manage that? Man, it, you know, just retaining that information, I mean, it really took a lot of uh, a lot of studying. You know, we studied. And so, 
um, study, write notes down, you know, and just, you know, memorize and going up it over and over again in your head and just going over the plays and, you know, making it very familiar to you to where it's almost like, you know, second nature. And so, but it did, it took, it took a lot, you know, time just to study and, and making sure you understood exactly what it is that you was doing on the play. And so if you had to make an adjustment, uh, you know, you had to know it immediately. It's, that's another thing. Like you had to know the thing where you was able to retain everything quick, you know? And so a lot of guys don't make teams because sometimes they don't, they, they, they don't retain the, the playbook. And so I had, I had John Gruden. My first offensive coordinator in the NFL was John Gruden. And so all that, when you see why stick banana, you know, Texas, right? This, you know, it was always, it was always that it's like, okay. So in your head, you knew it was always personnel formation, uh, motion, play, you know, whatever. Like, so it was always like in that series that you knew that you had to hear something like, okay, I got that. So sometimes for, you know, maybe wide receivers, wide receivers might break out early because they only have one part of something they had to hear, you know, maybe linemen are just waiting for this one part, but almost like tight ends, like we had to know everything because we're doing a lot of the motion and, and you know, uh, and movement you know, and, and what we're doing in the, in the play. And so I know exactly, you know, like in Kansas City, we, we did a lot of that. We did a lot of, uh, you know, like the stemming and the moving. Uh, and so uh, that was that was part, pretty much our, our primary offense was was that, was moving a lot from, from tight end position. Uh, but, man, that, that, without a doubt, retaining that information is film, is meetings, is studying, it's just going over things, and so you know, man. And that's not even that's not even just learning your stuff. Then film and stuff is learning what your opponent's going to do against you too, or what what yeah. their tendencies are. And that's like I I don't think a lot of fans understand like what you guys actually do. Right. You know what I'm saying, and what it takes to to do what you do at a consistent, excellent level. You know, it's not just show up and play. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, and so it's it's, it's nice to have someone who played here to kind of help put that out there. Like, yeah, we didn't just, hey, do this and go. I'm like this, it's real work. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I got I got one more, just because I watched his Hall of Fame speech. What was it like playing for Vermeil? Oh man. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, playing for Dick Vermeil, uh, Coach Vermeil. I'm sorry, no disrespect, Coach Vermeil. No, Coach, Coach Vermeil. Vermeil. Yeah, Coach Vermeil. Uh, he was uh, very, uh, very easy to to play for, uh, for the simple fact that uh, you knew he cared about you. You knew that he uh, he really really uh care deeply about his players and that's that's uh, as as a guy that that comes to work every single day it's always good to be respected and appreciated and he always made you feel that way so if it was something that a coach that had that type of uh, uh rapport with you you had no problem uh, fighting for or going out there to battle for so you know there's things that, that coach Ramil uh, he did how you made you feel uh, that you know you you just you felt like you you had to you had to win you wanted to win for this man you wanted to play for this man and so that was the thing about him man I think he, he taught a lot about life uh, more so uh, just coaching the X's and O's you know he had that knowledge of coaching the X's and O's he taught more and coached more about him about life how you treat people. It's very important. But every person that he saw, he meant that he loved them, he was going to tell them that he loved them. He said, you shouldn't use the word to weaponize or just to say it to get something out of somebody. You should say it because we mean it. And how much people, you know, mean to us. And that's important. And, you know, at that moment, he started tearing up. But that's Sometimes, man, these life lessons. That's what I tell my brother, man. He, he taught life lessons. He taught us how to 
how to care about one another, you know, how to play for one another, you know, how to love one another, how to say, okay, you know, it is, I love you, right? Some guys are like, yeah, you know, I get, yeah, man, now look, hey, listen, I appreciate you for who you are, and I love you. Just want you to know that, right? So if you don't know anything, just know I love you, okay? Because of who you are, what you mean to me. So I think those things are important. I think those things are important in this world, especially today, you know, because, you know, we, there's not a lot of love shown out there like like you should be. Uh, so sometimes, we, like, we forget that other people have feelings. Sometimes it's all about how, sometimes how you make other people feel about themselves shows a lot about who you are and their character, right? So that's why I love, like, I, Coach Rubio, that's, that's, that's why I love him so much. I was going to say, I think if you, if you haven't got a chance or you didn't watch his Hall of Fame induction speech, you should, because I think he did more time thanking people mm. all the way back to when he was coaching. I think he even went back to high school. Yes. Um, the pe- I think those people made him feel a certain way, which is why he made other people, other paying it forward. You That's know right. what I'm saying? Like he even – he thanked everybody that yeah. I think he could think of, which just shows you, like, as as a man, he didn't he didn't take any relationship for granted, and everybody helped him get to where he was. He even, like, I think Cubtown said, I think I got that guy fired, but you know, it's it's like they brought me back to be this coach and yeah. this coach, and and you know, it's it's it's. Like you said, you can receive the real measure of a man or of him just in his, his Hall of Fame speech. It wasn't about him. It was about everybody else and, and how they all groomed him to be who he was and um, singled out people from the organizations that he played, that he coached. And yeah. um, I also think it was really cool that Andy left camp flew up there to say congratulations and, and, you know, stick around all that stuff. That's, that's when you can affect people like that, especially Andy, who's going to be a hall of fame coach himself. Yeah. I, I think one was Ted Williams. Ted Williams was my first oh, tight ends coach in the NFL. Uh, He, and I'll, I'll name some names of guys he's, he's coached. Okay. <clears throat> so he was a tight ends coach with the Eagles with me. Then he became the running backs coach, Coach Deuce Staley. And then he coached LaShawn McCoy, you know, Shady. And so Ted was, uh, he, he was actually a principal out there in Compton High School. <laughs> you could believe it. And he ended up becoming an NFL football coach. Uh, started coaching at UCLA uh, and got into the NFL and ended up coming to uh, the Eagles. Uh, and I think that was the Eagles was his first uh, professional football team that he coached. But he taught me a lot about how to just handle and see life and see the NFL and itself as a business, but also, too, getting me prepared. Uh, but also to loving me and him and his wife just being able to, you know, take me under the wing, help nurture a young guy who was trying to find his way, uh, and he did an incredible job of it. And like I said, he, I named it Deuce Staley, Sean McCoy. Uh, you know, he, he touched a lot of guys, young guys' lives. He did. You know, trying to get them on the right path. And I think he catching the guys early, with his wisdom and knowledge, uh, helped save me for myself. I'm gonna put it that way, you know. Because a lot of us, you know, kind of discipline it. Like, hey man, like, look, there's some things you, you know, you shouldn't do, and this is how you should, you know, do yourself and how you should carry yourself in the NFL. So he had that. He had that. He, and it was a lot of like straight talk. It was, you know, the truth. That was one thing you won't go. He won't go lie to you. You won't go sugarcoat it. He told you the truth. You know, and you can always appreciate and love a coach to tell you the truth. You may not always like what they say, but they're always going to tell you the truth. You know, it's almost like Andy told Frank Clark, like, hey, man, he came, he told me the truth. He, hey, you underperformed. 
Like this, you know, let's, let's just be honest here. Uh, you know, if you weren't getting it done, then I'm going to tell you you weren't getting it done. And sometimes you got to have a heartfelt conversation, uh, you know, with the coach or with a player about what he's doing and what he's not doing. So I was so thankful I had a guy, a coach in my, in, in, in my corner that fought for me. You know, we talked about it earlier, like somebody fighting for you, he was the guy that, that, that fought for me. So if I wasn't the voice and I still try to find my voice in the NFL, he was that voice for me. So uh, he did a wonderful job with young guys. Like I said, you know, uh, I just mean that, you know, Deuce Daly, uh, Sean McCoy. So very underrated, very underrated. I've I seen a lot. I met some really fine, fine coaches, really fine coaches. Another one is Mike Solari. I've seen Mike Solari. Al Saunders is another guy. You know, I, I think some of these guys just really didn't get their due like they should have. Al Saunders probably should have became the head coach at the Vermeer level. Actually, we thought he was going to become the head coach, and I turned it up getting it. So, you know, it's different things there, but I, I think Al Saunders is, is a brilliant man. Not just a brilliant man, but also, too, uh, seeing Isaac Bruce and those guys this past weekend, so they know what, what Bruce, uh, you know, what uh, Al brought to the game. Corey Holt and those guys, they talk about how Al was like, he was a driving force. Al would go out there chasing these guys, showing them how to finish the blocks of the wide receiver. So, you know, the greatest show on turf. Yeah, Mike Marks was, you know, put that thing together, orchestrated it, but you needed somebody to teach guys how to make this thing work, right? You know, you can have a guy X's and O's, but how do we execute it? And how should we execute it? And so... I remember Al Saunders being in meetings and saying, if wide receivers get down the field to block, uh, Marshall should have at least six or seven more touchdowns a year just based off the effort alone of going down the block. So, like, when I'm seeing this, like, when I hear things like that, when I see on the TV uh, games being played and I'm watching wide receivers not blocking or just standing around, I'm like, there it is. There's one. There's a touchdown. Could have happened, right? And so things like that, when you when you know, this knowledge that is that is, you know, this being pushed out to us, uh, you always gotta appreciate guys like that because you're just like, wow, that's yep, see what he's talking about. So he, he was definitely there's a few underrated guys. So Yeah, that 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 is uh that's awesome. And and you know, we as fans would never know, you know, those kinds of things. And so it's, you know, it's, it's really awesome to, to get to hear uh, about uh, coaches like that. Like, you know, who was, who was your favorite player growing up? You know, when you were a kid and you were watching football, who was, who was your favorite player? Uh, football wise, favorite player, uh, Walter Payton, uh, Dr. J, you know what I mean? Like when I'm sitting there talking about, we're talking about, the advance of it, that's without a doubt. Those are my guys that I love watching uh, growing up. Uh, so, you know, baseball-wise, uh, baseball used to be my favorite sport, actually. Uh, so, you know, I was a huge uh, Dave Winfield. I used to love Dave Winfield. Come on. Uh, Miss October? Reggie Jackson? Come on, man. Shoot. Don't, don't let me start naming some names out here. So. <laughs> I mean, it was some, 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 some really great guys. But football-wise, man, I always like sweetness, man. Walter Payton was always that guy to me. But I mean, I'll tell you a story. We were in – me and my father were in uh, Georgia, and he was there. And somebody – it was before he got really sick. Yeah. And um, somebody told him he didn't have it anymore or something like that. Now, he's clean. He's got – the nice suit, dress shoes. You know how he went out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Took the took the shirt off, took the coat off, middle of this nice, nice hotel or whatever. He pops out a hundred quick push ups and then walks halfway across the lobby on his hands, stands back up, puts his coat back on, and goes, Don't tell me I ain't got it and <laughs> walks <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> That was him. That was Walter Payton. That's my one memory. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. So I was oh, like, man. I was just when you said it, I just had this big old grin because I just, <laughs> I just 
Sorry, I'm I'm fanning out again. Yeah, man, I know. That's hey, that's man. That was that was the man. That was the man without a doubt. You know, so huge fan of Walter Payton, man. Huge fan. And, and who who did you model uh, your your own game after? What, or did you did you model your game after anyone? Uh, not really. I want I wouldn't say I, it was it was guys I watched the tight ends that I really actually liked watching uh, that I, I admired. But as far as my game, I, I thought my game was like you know to me, I wanted to be that uh, athletic guy that that ran reverses and all of, all those different things. You know, because I had I had the athletic ability to do it. But I used to watch man uh, uh, Ben Coates. I used to like uh, 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 Green. You know, from, uh, from Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. As far as tight end wise, I, man, come on. John Mackey, you used to watch the old films of him. I was like, man, that's how a tight end should play. You know, breaking tackles, run in, and just unstoppable. Unstoppable force. us. Uh, so, yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, Eric Green from, uh, yeah, Pittsburgh. Uh, and so, that, that was the guys, man, that played the position. I was like, yeah, that's – I like those guys. So here's more of a fun one, I, I guess, and this wasn't one of the, that I had on there, but if you could take individual traits from any tight end in history and put them together and build the perfect tight end, like, you know – what would that look like? Like so and so's brains, and, and so and so's r- route running, and, and and Jason Dunn's blocking, and, and you know all of these things. How would how would you build the perfect tight end? I kind of put you on the spot here with this one. So yeah, this, yeah, you know, no, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, okay, definitely my blocking. Right. That was that's the layup. Yeah. I would have to say that maybe hand wise, uh, Tony's hands. Uh, maybe stretching the field ability. I might have to say uh, Kellen Winslow or Shannon. And I think escapability of feet and moving around, maybe Travis. That's that's right. I, I, I like that. That's that's it's a great combination of guys. I think. Um, so that's that's what that would be it. Hey, there were three Chiefs on that list, so I, I don't think any of us can complain about that. No, no, no. Uh-uh. All right, how about this one? If you didn't, if you hadn't played tight end, what position would you have played instead? Oh, that's that's easy. Defensive end. Okay. Yeah. Matter of fact, I, I, when I came out, came out slash, tight end slash defensive end, I played in the senior bowl. I played both tight end and defensive end. I had a couple of snaps of defensive end uh, during the senior, senior bowl. As a matter of fact, I, I even said uh, after I hung up my tight end cleats, I could easily go put my hand in the dirt and be a defensive end. I'll get, I'll get you six sacks easy during the year. So that's how I feel. Six so was there? More. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 I was just saying, yeah, six or more. I, I, I just, I just feel like in my head because I started at defense. I started defense at, in college. I started uh, outside linebacker, defensive end. And then they moved me to tight end. So, so that all worked. Yeah. So, what? Who were the defensive ends then that that you you kind of looked up to, or, or you, you know, you saw? Oh man, I really like this this player because he's you know, what a really nasty or, you know, I, I really like how, how this guy just throws people around or, or you know, whatever it is. Oh yeah, man. Ain't true. There wasn't nobody better than Reggie White. You know, the position outside linebacker company, get guys. I mean, it was nobody better than Lawrence Taylor. And so, but I see guys that, that was technicians, guys I played against. Bruce Smith was another monster. Uh, Charles Mann, Charles Haley. Uh, all those guys, man, was, was incredible, man. Richard Dent. I mean, I, I just I watched guys, man, defensive ends. They could absolutely just come and get it. It was just wrecking shop. 
All right. What about uh, what makes a tight end one of the greatest? Like, I know blocking is going to be part of your answer, but but what what to you does a tight end have to have, or you know, what has to be part of their game to to be considered one of the greatest tight ends? Uh, I think, man, really uh, being able to get open, you know, route running, uh, catching the football. Uh, breaking tackles. You know, that's to me is like one of the things that you that you need to be like a great tight end. You know, you got to be able to, to make plays. You got to be a playmaker, and you got to win on your matchup. So, if you were in, if you were with the Chiefs and you were coaching or or mentoring the tight ends, the young tight ends that we have. Yeah. Let's say you were alongside Travis and you were kind of mentoring uh, Jody and Noah and, and some of the, the uh, young guys that we have. What would you, what have you noticed about their games that, and I don't, I'm not trying to get to be critical or anything, but you know, what would you kind of, you know, what are some things that you you've seen that you would kind of say, Hey, you know, let's work, you know, let's work on this. And if you work on this, you know, you're going to be a really good tight end in the NFL, and you're going to really help the Chiefs uh, win some Super Bowls. Yeah, I, I think uh, to me, I would emphasize all the little things. You know, kind of make them great, like some like doing some of that nasty work of like blocking out there, making sure you block on the second level, and being successful, you win that battle. Uh, in other words, just you know, be able to you know get out of breaks and. You know, catch football, win on your matchups. Um, I mean, that's what I see. And I, I love that they uh, they compete. Got a great group of guys there. Uh, but I would always emphasize, you know, just the little things, the little things, little things always matter and tight end. Well, we kind of talked about four tight ends. Um so you can't say 14 personnel, but outside of 14 personnel, what would be your favorite personnel to, for for us to run and, and even, you know, when you were playing to run? Yeah, so, you know, it's got to be 13. I mean, that's you get just a three in, that had to be perfect, right? <laughs> so uh, I know four is almost impossible, but, the, you know, three is definitely doable. And I think that um, that is a, a, a matchup nightmare. But even if you have just the twelve man with, with too tight, that is that is that is absolutely key. That is absolutely key. Uh, and what I, I would say this: uh, when we start doing two tight ends at the Chiefs, when I played, you seen a lot of teams start to emulate what we did and see the success of having two tight ends. So all of a sudden, you just start seeing team starting to go into that style like oh man okay we're going to try to find two tight ends that, that, that's going to be able uh, to be these guys and I remember I told Tony one time that before Hernandez and Grant got together like we was we was killing that, that double tight ends man we, we were nobody better than what we were doing so uh, I think we kind of started like man the trend in a sense you know because we so successful uh, Belichick was watching film. Oh, of course. Guys. Well, he was doing that. Yeah, probably you know, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> taping some film too. You know, even guys <laughs> what we was doing. You know, the Belichick way. So, uh, but yeah, now I, I just I think that was a lot of success and, and team seeing that we were number one in, in like three years in a row. They won and then was like third or something like that. Man, we just offensively we were just. We were, we were it. We were it. So I, I do want to ask this question because I think it's super important. Yeah. And, and I'm not I'm not going to try to start a fight here, so I'm not going to ask the best barbecue in Kansas City. Mm. What I'm going to ask is, what's your favorite side at any of the barbecue joints in Kansas City? Now you have to keep in mind before he answers, Kentucky has some really good barbecue too. That's really good part. <laughs> without a doubt, without a doubt, for sure, for sure. Uh, you know what? I, I want to explore some more barbecue spots out there in Kansas City. Uh, really, this year when I go out there, I want I want 
we had uh, Cornell Pal out, and, and people brought a list of guys, uh, you know, places to go. I wanted to check a few of these places out, so I'm gonna go to you these spots and check it. Uh, but my my side, I always like, uh, you know, greens is always good. I always like greens. Good greens, man. You just you gotta have some good greens, man, with your barbecue. You know, uh, that's that's. That to me is a staple. Have a good barbecue. My cousin does uh, some some uh, some cabbage. Hmm. My goodness. You do it, man. Put some cabbage on the grill. Boy, you got yourself there. Uh, a lot of people say mac and cheese, man, but I'm not a, really a mac and cheese guy. I'm just I'm not. You know, I like I like decent mac and cheese, certain mac and cheese, but I'm you know I'm not. That's not one of the first thing I go through. Uh, Green beans, but I give me the greens, man. Anything green, give it to me. I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. So, and, and how about uh, tailgating? Have you actually got to tailgate at Arrowhead? Because uh, one of our one of our good friends, another YouTube Chiefs YouTuber, Big Chief Sean, uh, he's a big tailgate guy. His videos, most of his content is tailgating with other Chiefs fans. So, have you got to? Uh, have you got to go tailgating no, at Arrowhead? No, not really. No, not no get, tailgating. I have not. Uh, the games I've gone out to, I get there, and of course I'm, I'm going into the stadium. But I have not had a chance to like really sit there and just bask in all of the smoke and the, all, all the whole thing of just the tailgating. I just haven't. Uh, I tell you what, if you walked around out there, you you wouldn't. Yeah. You wouldn't have to pay for them and everybody feed you. You'd be full before you got into the game. Yeah, I wouldn't even know how to approach them. <laughs> you don't have to approach them, but like I, I I'm telling you, tell daters, we they are we are a different different breed. You'd be walking around out there and you just and like, oh you wanna taste this? Really? <laughs> just, oh yeah. They they're out there early, they're fun loving, they're easy going, um, and they're usually drunk by kickoff. Yeah, but... yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't know as far as like if, if you know people just go up to other places like, hey, make I try what you got on the you know on the grill. You, well, see, if for you that that would be easy. You're Jason Dunn. It's just I think it's so funny because I think it's something that Lamar kind of encouraged because what a lot of people don't know is when he got to the stadium when people were talking, he used to walk around out there and talk to the fans, oh, walk wow. through the parking lot and stuff. He was like legit. Man of the people, Kansas City. He never said it was my team. It's your team. It's Kansas City's team. So he'd get out there and talk to those guys, tailgating, or you know, just walk around for a minute before he went back in. And and my father said it was stuff he used to always do. You know, and he knew you by name if he met you once. And, and I think it just kind of grew from we're, there. We're getting this out here, and I think a lot of people don't quite know. So you see it right here, Twitter. Twitter at Jason's TD89 is my Twitter handle. Uh, and of course, at Chiefs Concerns or Concerns Chief uh, is for our show. And it's on YouTube, of course, Apple, Spotify. Uh, but what we wanted to do, man, we just wanted to bring a little bit more, uh, you know, commentary to, to let people know a little bit about, you know, the ins and outs of, of working behind the scenes, actually being, you know, football players and how all of that felt. What it you know means being in a locker room, how guys actually think about these particular things, you know, what's really going on, maybe contract talks and all that, you know. And so, uh, so we, we we try to kind of give it a look behind the curtains uh, to what's going on, and we give our perspective on you know players and what they do and where the team is going, uh, you know, from our, our football mind and with our knowledge. And we got some good stuff, man. Some good. Uh, Good content, man. We, we, you know, we talk and have a great, you know, conversation. And we, we encourage everybody, send us something. Give us topics to talk about, you know, whatever it is. And, and to us, man, we, we, we love it. We love having a conversation and talking. And, I, you know, I'm one of those guys, man. Uh, I love my fans. And I love having a good conversation, man. Good conversation about stuff. So, yeah, please do. Come visit us. Come visit us. Come on over. Come on over. 
yeah guys please make sure you check you check out their channel follow him on twitter he doesn't have a blue check so you might be skeptical but it's definitely him um and i mean there's there's great content on twitter you know as he shared some of the things that he shared but again the channel is is awesome you can get all kinds of nuggets of information there uh and you can learn more about jason it's, it's going to be a fun year it's going to be a fun year man because of what the chiefs are going to do out there on the football field uh and so uh i'm always hyped uh to get out and, and discuss uh, what's going on with the Chiefs, man? It's the, it's the concerns of the Chiefs, baby. So, so yeah, come over, come visit us, man. And we, we appreciate it, guys. We do. We appreciate it, fellas, a lot. You know, I appreciate y'all having me on the show tonight. And I will come back to visit to have some more information to contact and, and, and talk a little bit more, top it up some more. Uh, so, uh, this is this has been fun. It's been fun, man. Thank you. Absolutely. And again, it, we can't say it enough. It, it's been our pleasure. Gooch, are you ready to uh, to pay some bills and get us out of here? Man, I'm still, I'm still in awe. But I can do it. We appreciate everybody that watches this content. Absolutely. I would tell you all the other stuff, but make sure you check out Chief's Concerns. Jump on Jay's Twitter, E-Dub's Twitter, um, just follow them, man. It's all good content. We are always here on RGR, but I'm going to spend more time over there because those guys have good stuff. Big Chief Sean, Chief in the North, Seth Kaiser. We're all out here doing big things. Please, 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 above all else, tell somebody you love them uh, because you never know when today will be the last chance you get. Right. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. We want to thank Jason again, and uh, we hope you've enjoyed this show. Peace out, guys. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more, and subscribe to RGR Football.